What's up, Star Family? My name is Marissa. If you guys have been on my channel for a while, then you guys know what's up. If not, welcome to the Star Family. This is an interview that I was able to conduct very conversational style with a friend of mine that I met in a program a couple years back. Uh, she's just, I remember her being a very just in tune and, and very powerful, very present individual, very magnetic. And so she's someone whose work I've been following for a while. She recently just released a book into this world. Very, very powerful. It's a channeled material. And in today's interview, I just dive in with her what channeling is, kind of, you know, all things about channeling. And then of course, towards the end, the conversation was naturally steered towards the direction of the state of affairs on the planet currently, how to remain sovereign within yourself and how to kind of own your role during these times without getting swept up in the current of, you know, all of the crap that's going on and how to remain uh, stuck in it, like how to remain centered throughout it all. So just like anything else I produce and release into the world, I hope this is able to bring you some sort of value and real time application in your own life. And yeah, if it resonates, give this video a thumbs up, share it and connect with your star family down in the comment section. All right, we'll talk soon. Much love. Hello. Hi, Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm great for you. It's so wonderful to see you. <laughs> I was just trying to remember or break my brain from the last time we actually connected. Um, probably during the course. I can't, I don't think oh. anyone connected. <laughs> so I think that was like what, 2018? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mate. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this is my second interview with anyone. So I'm like super excited to have you on. I kind of know a little bit about how you got started, but I'm sure a lot of people like channeling is kind of this entity within itself that there can be a lot of misperceptions and a lot of confusion around how to even get into it. So I'm wondering if yeah. you'd like to talk about that. Sure. It seems to be like the big topic, honestly. <laughs> That's what everyone wants to talk about. Um, so yeah, I don't know how I got into channeling. Uh, like exactly. It wasn't something I was super interested in doing at all. Um, in fact, if anything, I was like spending most of my life trying not to have anything to do with like um, metaphysical entities or spirits or anything like that, because it was something that from the time I was a little kid was available to me, but um, wasn't accepted in my family and wasn't, um, and it was kind of scary, you know, being the only one that I knew that had sort of like saw things that weren't there or heard things that weren't there. And uh, so I kind of shut that all down. But then when I came back to spirituality, when I was pregnant and started meditating and stuff, it's like these invitations and knockings on that sense, because I would call it a sense, um, came back um, to the point where I got so frustrated with this constant sort of like presence of asking to bring this through that I just stubbornly went, well, fine, I'll, sh I'll show you it's not possible. I'll show you I'm not a channel. I'll show you that, um, that you know, nothing's going to come from this. And then like, I'll just, you know, find out that it's all my imagination and everything will be fine. Um, so the first time I actually sat down to the channel, I was alone and really had this expectation that like, I would just go and meditate for 20 minutes, nothing would happen. And, uh, and that was be the end of it but instead I played back the recording and there was a channel message there which I couldn't remember having spoken myself wasn't information that came my own consciousness or that I could identify as my own consciousness and um, I started experimenting from there so um, fast forward like I guess it's a year and a half now um, and I have like um, a deeper understanding of maybe a little bit like the mechanics of how I get into channeling, how I go into trance, but um, I still don't know anything about it sort of, or any of the background of what it is or how it works or anything like that. So um, I'm as open to it as, as anyone else is who's open to this topic because I really don't have any answers. Yeah, and I love that because that takes a certain level of humility, but I feel like at the same time, that's what makes a beautiful channel because this came through the other day like I feel like 
so I do tarot, I read tarot, and I understand that's a form of channeling. And I also, it's like, when I do group readings, for example, it's usually about the second pile that I really tune in, and the first one is so choppy, because there's like this period where, like, Marissa really has to get out of the way. And I don't know how to describe it, because I know what, like, the trans channeling is a lot different than, like, reading tarot, but... I feel like that's a great segue into how we're always kind of in a channeling state, but de depending on like how much we're taking care of our mental, emotional, physical body will kind of determine what we're tapping into or what we're actually channeling. Uh, so I'm wondering if you can, or if you want to share about that or tap into that, like I feel like it's a noticeable sensation and maybe that's what you mean too by you felt the invitation like something knocking on your door and it's it, it really is something that you can't put into words but you can feel like it's almost like a pressure or something to want to be expressed yeah it really is like that and i i totally agree with you that how i can see that tarot could be the same thing because when i used to paint i would go into sort of that same space of like vanishing you know that's not um that i, I I believe that's also channeling, but it's not the same of like what's considered channeling because it's not direct, let's say teachings or information or, or stuff like maybe what's coming through with Vagrian. But um, yeah, it's like you said, we're always channeling, right? Because there's really no like scientific or logical explanation for why our are connected to our bodies. Like it's, there just isn't, right? Like nobody's come up with a good understanding of like why we are housed in these vessels and are able to control them and do what we want to in theory through them um and nobody knows what happens when that connection is broken at death you know so it's like this complete abstract thing and i believe that it's also channeling it's like we all have our own consciousness or what we determine as our own consciousness that we're individuated with like we identify like i identify with jesse and you identify with marissa that's our energy stream, like our standard energy stream. And then sometimes your vessel can be used for the collective consciousness. Um, it can be used for like artistic expression. It can be used for, like you said, with a group, for group tarot, you could channel the intention of the group and bring like the shared consciousness to expose more of maybe what they just can't see without the permissions that to see it through an external representation of like your tarot spread. Um, so I really think we're all just simply <laughs> uh, moon, moon rovers. <laughs> we're like sort of planted here and then there's a connection to something. And um, whether you're connected to sort of like a universal source or consciousness, it, it is like what you said, sort of getting out of the way, getting your own, your own radio frequency of like Jesse or Marissa out of the way to allow something else that wants to come through temporarily or something else that wants to come through that has a more expanded perspective on you know maybe the information that people are wanting at this point in time or you know something that could be useful for the person on the other end of receiving that i love that and i i love too that i mean this is what i feel like we go through this as you know i, I shouldn't say we because i don't definitely don't do this uh the same form of channeling as you do but I still get the same thing that I've heard trans channelers talk about before, like entities like Abraham Hicks and Bashar and all these other, you know, more well-known like Cryon, they talk about how, you know, it's even, it's a mystery even to them, but they were like, the most important thing is that they could see the amount of change, the amount of transformation, the amount of impact, the encouragement, the empowerment that it would give to people that they were like, they didn't really care where it came from because it's like, I, and this is something that I, I communicate a lot in, in the work that I do is, you know, when you feel someone speaking from a place of truth, truth has a, a vibrational resonance. It's almost like this, this wave of calm, this wave of like, yes, that's right. And it doesn't really matter where it's coming from. It's like really training yourself to tune into that, again, that feeling, that sensation. So I'm wondering, because we kind of touched about this a, a few months ago. It feels like the realm of channeling, obviously in terms of mainstream society is kind of like out there, out there, but in a way there's also seems to be a little bit of stigma about it. I've noticed even within the spiritual communities. So I'm just wondering uh, if there's anything you wanna share about that, about people that maybe are having similar experiences of you of, I'm not sure if you'd call it a soul contract with a group entity or you know a consciousness or that wants to you know serve the planet in this way. Uh, how you've kind of navigated through 
you know, other people's opinions, et cetera, feeling crazy, what, what have you? Yeah, it's a good question. And you are right that sort of like, even in spiritual communities, there's a stigma or a reluctance or just this, uh, like doubt, you know, um, I think for me, there, there was also still that doubt, even as I was doing it at the beginning. And, um, I think I spent quite a long period at the very beginning of trying to figure out my own discernment. So I would like listen back to the sessions and like make sure nothing was said that was like, I don't know, like edgy or something, or like <laughs> that wasn't in resonant with my own, you know, like with what I would be feeling comfortable coming through me, you know? And then, um, and then after a while I realized that the frequency was consistent. So I didn't need to sort of like monitor anymore what was being said because that energy, like you said, it was just, just pure love, you know, so I could recognize that. And then it w I knew it was safe to allow anything to come through. Um, the interesting thing with sort of like my personal life and, and channeling and like being open about it was that nobody gave a shit. <laughs> Like nobody cared at all. <laughs> like all, <laughs> all the like the the fear I had beforehand of like being weird. Um, like people even like at cocktail parties when when we used to still have those things. Like nobody even batted an eyelid. They were like, oh yeah, oh sure, yeah. I've never heard of that. I've never met anyone who does that, but that's kind of cool, you know. So all of the like stuff that I had gone on before I started in my head about like oh my god, uh, like witch hunt stuff, you know. It just never came to be um, to the point where it was like laughable because like I almost was like lacking that in like attention. <laughs> I was like, had braced myself for this impact that there just wasn't. So that was like a great surprise. So I would say to anybody who's sort of in the position of like not knowing if it's okay for them to be themselves and allow something through to like really check their fears because maybe their fears aren't actually real. Like maybe nobody really cares and maybe the important people in your life like are gonna stick around anyway because they'll just think like okay whatever <laughs> like, it's not a big deal you know much more of a big deal in your own head um so I haven't been like ghosted or alienated I have made a lot of people uncomfortable I think there there have been like quite a few people who drifted away simply because it's not very comfortable with them, but I've also noticed that there's like a lot of lurking. So <laughs> like people have drifted away. Maybe they don't interact with me directly, but I know that they're still interacting. Mm. They're still there. They're still listening to the message. So that kind of is a, a thing that also in a way keeps me going because I kind of know that if there's a curiosity there, it's because there is a resonance on some level. You know, if someone was told Please believing and uninterested in the message that's coming across, why would they ever even, you know, entertain the idea of it being a possibility or even be, you know, critical or negative about it? They would just, you know, fade away and that would just be it. So, um, yeah, I would say like from my own experience, there's, there was absolutely no negative impact from, from becoming public and taking this like to, to a more open stage, which is, which is pretty cool. I love that. And I feel like this day and age, it, this stuff is becoming more mainstream, these types of conversations. I mean, I know that you follow Lee Harris too. I actually, the day after I reached out to you about having this interview, he actually posted a video about how to channel. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is, this is something that people are interested in. What is something exciting that you like to talk about? Or like, what have you learned about yourself? What has this unearthed in you, for you, about you? Like, do you feel like this has activated you to a new level in your mission? Like, do you feel like it's developed a greater level of self-conviction? How has this helped shape you, this new, because I know you going public with this is, has been fairly recent. It's interesting, it resolved a lot because I think a lot of any of my issues or stuff that was going on before it was because of trying to repress it in a lot of ways. Um, or trying to repress like the ability to, or just these senses is just a, just a big part of me, you know? Um, yeah, baby. It feels really <laughs> a little one. Mm -hmm. Um, it just feels really natural. It feels really like just what I'm meant to be doing. And it also allows me to take a bit of a step back from, from spirituality and my own spiritual seeking, because it's such a connection to this like intelligence and energy 
that I can actually just like live my life as, <laughs> as like the normal person I always wanted to be because I have this like balance in a way, you know? So like when I'm channeling, there's very much that energy just coming through me and I just get out of the way. So it's really like what you hear a lot of spiritual teachers talk about, about like allowing the energy to use you, allowing your life to live you, um, having faith, surrendering. And so it's all that stuff. And then it trickles into sort of my, my regular day-to-day -day life because I'm just so much more relaxed with everything. Yeah. And like a lot of the teachings, even though, even the entire book, like it hasn't sunk in I, <laughs> for the amount of times I've read the book and edited the book and whatever, there, like, there's still a lot in there that I'm able to implement yet. Like I'm not at that level and hasn't sunk in to, to the depth that those understandings like would completely transform you. But, but it's like, there's this relaxed nature and just sort of like knowing it's there, that sort of knowing that everything's okay mm -hmm. is something that really has landed. Like there's no need to stress about anything. <laughs> and I feel like that's like the root of every good spiritual text is there can be so many complexities and so many angles, so many different ways to break something down. But at the end of the day, it really is just let it unfold, like be along for the journey. I can't tell you how many times too, Jess. So I'm wondering if too, we can tap into like what specifically this entity is and, and how we are drawn to different types of channels. If that's something you feel like you can touch on with like soul family and whatnot, but I won't, I can't tell you how many times I've been integrating something. I've been receiving messages from my guides and learning something in my own university, YO university. And then I'll pick up this book and it'll spit like word for word exactly what I'm already exploring or exactly what I needed confirmed about what I was intuiting. And it was almost like, and I feel like that happens a lot on the spiritual path. It's like, you'll be intuiting things. You'll be going through these perspective upgrades and these perspective tweaks so you can actually enjoy your life a little bit more. And then it's like, you get that, that final confirmation that's almost like encouraging you to be convicted. Does that make sense? Yeah, it absolutely does. And um, because Vagrian is not actually Vagri, like there's, there's, it's really complex, this whole concept of like something being everything, <laughs> because we have so many ideas of like that means, but when I feel into what they are, and it's not even a they, because that still like means that there's an us and a them, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, it's so hard to explain that aspect of it. Um, but it really is stemming from a level of universal consciousness. So what they explained to me about this book and what they've explained in some of the sessions and what they've explained in just my experience with them, um, not necessarily in words even, is that the, the book itself or the energy itself that created the book or that is the book or is the all the small time slices of existence that have led to each and every person that ends up getting or hearing about this or whatever is all connected. And so then you even like open the book, you have all the information, like you get the whole transmission. If you order it, or if you even hear about it from a friend or like someone who's watching this video, like you're getting the whole package anyway. So it totally makes sense that you would then also be given signals of like, those confirmations that you need or um or how it's all connected like just sort of seeing the background fibers of, of how everything's interlaced it's um they're not at all proprietary do you know what i mean like i don't i don't know about sort of other channels and like cryon or abraham hicks maybe more so it's very associated with esther but magrian although like what i understand as their frequency comes through me i don't think it doesn't come through everybody else as well like they're really very universal. They're just trying to explain it in a way that maybe I'm able to voice at this point or, or something like that, because it's really not actually even that That's just like a name that we've given it just for convenience. Yeah. Well, and I love it because I remember in the book, you talk about how you came across that name in particular. It felt like the permission slip and the final kind of push that you needed over the edge in order to fully surrender. 
because doesn't that mean seeking it, it's kind of like the subtext or the subtitle the title of, of the book yeah yeah seeking ends when sharing begins that's what that word means correct i don't know if it actually means that 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 was the only like reference on all of online and like it's not even findable anymore but that was like just a weird who knows if they messed with the internet for that day but yeah that's the that's what came up i love this i love all of this yeah this is something that in you know again i'm just relating this back to something that i have context with with the with tarot and that is like i'll do the readings real time is so crazy how accurate these readings will be for the people that are drawn to it because i know i know that spirit is guiding me in that moment and the messages are coming through for those people that spirit knows will tune into it so it really forces you in the space of kind of really understanding as little as we can actually understand, but surrendering to what the, the zero point field is. And now like past, present, future, all collapsing in on itself. Um, yeah, within itself, it, it's such a beautiful dance. It, it just reminds me of such a, a feminine, um, just like the embodiment of the divine feminine, which is very mysterious. Like you can't put her in a container, no much how much you want to put her in a container. She can't, you can't fit her in any box. And that's what I really appreciate and love about the state that it can bring us closer towards. So if, if you, do you feel like there's any, yeah. um, like disclaimers that you would give to people about it? I'd suppose that, you know, you have to be just careful to remain with an open mind. There's, I guess two you can go in. You can either um, accidentally sort of close your mind off completely to, to channeled works just because you don't understand how something works. You don't want to like think beyond the possibility because if you accept that this is possible, maybe also all kinds of other scary unknown stuff is possible. So there's the, there's the, the tendency for us to doubt or disregard the things that we can't explain away, you know? Um, and then the other direction is sometimes with like channeled material or any sort of um, teachings, someone can get like a bit too reliant or dependent upon the teachings or not even dependent, but like start interpreting them as literal or not using their own intuition to figure out what's being said to them specifically. And then maybe even start telling other people what something means. Do you know what I mean? Like I've seen that a lot in, in some of like the groups that follow other channel material where like they're discussing a body of work and they're like, well, what did someone say about this? And they're like, well, they said this, 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 and this, which means that of course, if you're this type of person, you're horrible and you're going to hell. <laughs> it's like, whoa, that's not actually what they said. And if you just stood like for a second and tuned into the end forget about the words that are used. And this has happened in every religion as well. Like it's not, it's not about the words that are used. If you just stop for a second and tune into the energy and match that frequency, like don't with, you, with your mind, like look for the words and stuff like that, match the frequency of what's being transmitted, then you know that it's not literal. Mm -hmm. so you, like it's not, you know, even like the Bible, it's not an eye for an eye. That's not what it means. It doesn't mean go like hurt someone else, you know, it, but you're not getting the actual concept because you're not reading the energy behind it. So you can go either way. You can either completely disregard it or you can give it way too much weight and importance. But the truth is, is like, we're the, we're the measuring, the measuring, what do you, like the measuring cup, you know? You have to understand where the balance is in yourself. And then if your intention and goal is like, for example, with Vagrian, it's mostly um, about unity consciousness. Like that's what they're all about uh, when it comes down to it. Um, if your frequency is already sort of like has an interest or you're being drawn towards material that are like that, well then maintain your frequency with that, no matter what's written, you know, check with yourself first, always. Yeah. You know? So yeah, that's the disclaimer. That kind of piggybacking off of that is, I feel like people have an idea or at least I did. So this is why I'm bringing it up that if you have guides or you're aware of your guides that you somehow have all the answers and that your life shouldn't be hard, you're not gonna go through challenges. It almost feels like you have like this get out of jail free card. Um, so I'm wondering if you, if you have anything to say about that, those misperceptions. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's a great question. It's funny because um, you'd think that, you'd think that sort of having access to be able to ask sort of questions to this level of intelligence or energy at any time would be like a really awesome superpower. 
But what actually turns out to be is that if you're interacting on a regular basis with like an energy like this, you have a relationship with them. And like you said earlier, like sort of like a soul contract. And specifically if it's this kind of energy that is completely respectful of free will, um, <laughs> they are constantly allowing me to make all kinds of mistakes because of my continued stubbornness to want to make them. Okay. So I'm here living like a human life and I came here wanting to be human. So there's complete respect for that. Right now you probably can see down the road, every single mistake I'm going to make, you know, like, but they're not going to come in and tell me about it. And if I ask, they're going to treat me like they treat anyone in any of the sessions. And they're going to go, well, why are you asking this question? You know, and like inquire on me to get me to realize whatever it is I'm ready to realize by myself at that point in time. So they're like, um, a wise uncle or, you know, or smart, you know, smart, great grandma or something like that, that is just sort of in your life and allow, seeing it all, knows you're going to be fine and just allows you to, to have your journey and make your mistakes. And at the same time, um, they have a lot of expectations of me or not expectations, but there are requirements of me as like a vessel, you know, absolute respect for like my time and space. If I'm tired, if I don't want to channel or if like there's a period where there's something else that's happening or about to happen in my life like they've they disappear they tend to disappear but, but like right before very large world world events <laughs> like, like wait where are you going where are you what's gonna happen <laughs> yeah and they'll, they'll be like like right before the coronavirus thing they were like okay um yeah we'll see you guys in like four or five weeks and and it, this was like in a public session and we were all like oh well why <laughs> like what's going on but they wanted to give like that amount of time to sort of like have some impact, have all the panic and fear and whatever go on, and then like come to a space of like being able to re talk with them without sort of a reliance on a, oh, please solve our problems type of type of thing. So it's a very interesting relationship sort of on a personal level, what I have with them. And, um, and it's also very much nonverbal as well. So it's not going to give me answers on a verbal level, but you know, I'm very blessed to have the ability to sort of call upon them energetically when I need to. Yeah. I love that you say it is a relationship because that's totally how I feel with, you know, my guides. I feel they're so funny. They got some mad jokes that I don't like all the time, but I feel like they, yeah, it really just does feel like some friends that have your back. So I wasn't actually planning on talking about this, but I'm wondering if you, um, like if you have tapped into or, or asked them or what their perspective, what they can, um, divulge about, you know, everything that's happening on a planetary level. They've talked about it a bit. I think that the second book is probably going to be a lot about this specific topic, not sort of like our current events topic, but sort of what they're sort of what's going on. Um, and uh, the sort of short answer is, is that until we want to make a choice, until we're ready to make decisions, um, we're going to, we're, we're now in a position where we're creating enough catalyst for ourselves to actually come to a point where we decide to make a decision, you know, um, and then we'll, we'll move forward and not necessarily need as much catalyst as we're, as we're having now, but sort of, there was a tipping point. And what happened was, I guess we got to a point where enough people wanted to move into the earth, um, and enough people were upset or, desiring something different than the systems that we had going on that we've tipped into sort of the space where, you know, you create your own reality where we're creating the reality of the change. And at the point where enough people decide, okay, this is enough catalyst and suffering or perception of suffering. Um, at that point, it'll shift again where we can start creating, but until we're, <laughs> until we're ready to decide to start creating, we're going to keep seeing an acceleration of the catalyst to get to a point of such discomfort where you take your hand out of the flame, because that's basically what we're doing. It's like you're standing in a fire and you've got your hand hanging out in the flame. So if you're not going to feel the pain, it's going to get harder, you know? And um, that, that's kind of the, the stage and the phase we're in. From that perspective, it's all seen as good. Okay. So there's no negativity in any of this at all. Like according to like sort of universal consciousness, 
nothing is out of place, nothing is wrong. Um, we're just getting to the age where we can get to the ma maturity or understanding level that nothing's wrong and that we do have sovereignty and empowerment to actually start making choices. But it has to get to a certain sort of number of people, a number of um, sureness in each individual who already sort of leans towards that. And um, yeah, at the moment, that's, that's, not, uh, that's not yet the case, so yeah we'll see it's interesting yeah. though because i mean in the group I, I just feel like it seems so obvious what's happening it, it and that's i think that's really where my levels of compassion have deepened during this time is uh the whole concept of we're all playing a role like i really honestly don't know how i would survive this time if i wasn't right spiritually you know, so I'm wondering, um, especially within, you know, the spiritual communities, I feel like we have this idea of just meditate, like don't, don't be informed, don't get lost in it. But I really feel like there could be more of a balance between, you know, I, I think that's the ultimate form of detachment. It's like, yeah, you can be in it, like you can play your role perfectly, but you're not losing yourself in it. Like that's what a really great actor is, right? It's someone who yeah. owns their role, you really believe it. But behind it, they know that they're that that this is just a temporary character. So I'm wondering if you know if you have talked to the Big Green or if what even your perception is or your perspective of if people are in this kind of middle ground of not knowing how to engage or how to be proactive or how to share their truth in a way that they're adding to the scales tipping more in the favor of, you know, the ascension of humanity. Um, my advice from the beginning and Vagreen's advice supports this is just focus on your own balance, focus on your own cultivation of what you want to see. Like it really is at this point, be the change you want to see in the world. So even if you're not agreeing with like what you're seeing around you, you can always approach that from your new earth version. Do you know what I mean? Your new earth version is not going to be picking up a hammer and smashing the neighbor's head, right? Like that's, that's not how we get there. We have to call that in now. And even if it means like losing our freedoms, losing our life and blah, 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 blah. You know, like all this stuff. If we're this version now, that's how we get to where we want to be, you know? And it may mean doing things that you didn't think you were going to do, but because they're the, like, and things that you don't think are right, let's say, but you're right, correct in yourself. So it's a bit of a paradox. It's a bit of a challenge because we all have to heal our own fear wounds. We have to heal our own um, safety and control issues and uh, approval issues. You know, there's so much going on. So as you're healing yourself, if you just consistently make the choice of the person who's already living in that peaceful world, you know, already living in that world where there's harmony and everybody knows that we're all one, you know, bring that in now. And then even if it all goes to shit, like even if it really is your worst nightmare, like zombie apocalypse, like people eating each other shit, you know, um, at least you in this now were your new earth version. Yeah. You know, like that's, that's all we can ask for. That's all we can ask for is, is to be it now. You know, this uh, past six months has really activated me in a level that I never would have expected. I, uh, and I feel like a lot of people drawn to this might resonate with this. I have been a recovering people pleaser my entire life. Don't want anyone to say anything bad about me. I just want love and light and all that stuff. And it got to the point where I feel like I was becoming so imbalanced that I had a situation where, I mean, at first I really don't feel like I responded in my, my new earth <laughs> version because I just lost my shit of someone getting in my face and wanting to tell me how to, you know, it was about not wearing a mask. And it was like, I, I was repressing my truth for so long about what I thought was going on and what I thought was right that it was almost like I had no control over this next level activation of empowerment. Like it, it was, it was, it happened in a way that I maybe, um, that I wouldn't have wanted as small Marissa, but because it happened in such a way that I was forced to completely release my ego and like completely release that side of myself that wants to appease everyone's 
expectation of who they thought I was or even who I thought I was, who I thought I was. So when you yeah. say new earth responses, I'm, you do, I don't think you're necessarily meaning that it looks just like lovey and lighty and just like going with the flow. I feel like that you're kind of um, coming at it from a place of there can be and there should be some level of being active when you're guided to it. Like we don't have to shame ourselves out of that. No, absolutely not. It's not, it's not at all about that, you know, and part of, part of being your new birth response is also honoring any healing that needs to be doing, you know, like any healing that needs to take place or any, you know, triggering or interaction you have to have with someone that's going to provoke them into their healing. That's going to come through you, you know? So it's not, it's not a question of like repressing anything. You don't get to actually choose. The only choice you get to make is set that intention, like in the morning. You know, like you don't actually in the moment get to choose what comes through you. Okay. But if you're coming back to having that intention, having that intention, not walking through your day, like, you know, in the emotions of fear or, you know, discomfort and stuff like that and, and sort of selfish wants and needs, then what's going to come through doesn't always look like you being a friendly, you know, passive uh, pushover. Sometimes it really looks like you kind of organizing a rally, let's say, you know, if that's what's coming through you. So that's like totally fine. It's not about that, but it is not getting online. And like you said, shaming people because of the, the choices that they're making out of fear. Like everybody's reacting out of fear right now. Like there's not, nobody knows what the hell's going on. So instead of like going online and like shaming people, just stop a second. And first of all, find something better to do with that energy. Cause like you can, right? <laughs> There's so much you could be doing. And then aside from that, no matter who you have in front of you or not in front of you or near you or across the news or, you know, whatever it is, that person is doing the exact same thing that you would do if you were them, mm -hmm. right? The only reason why you're not doing that stuff is cause you're not them. You haven't had their background. You haven't seen the same television programs they've seen. You haven't had the same mother that they had. If you did, you would be doing that. Like that's, that is you. It's just another version of you. Yeah. So if we can kind of hold that and stop thinking that we're right all the time, then we'd have, you know, a better chance of, of getting along for sure. I feel like that is what would help. Keep and cutting out. This is, I know it's my internet. It's mine. Um, but I feel like that's what would help bridge the gap, you know, could, should, would, whatever. However, I, I do feel like if we understood what the spiritual journey was, like if more people truly, and I don't even feel like it's like you ha even have to call it a spiritual journey. It just feels like common sense of, okay, I am just offering to you my beliefs, just like everyone else is just offering their beliefs. And what's been like so crazy to me yeah. about this time is that we're just in an age where like before we wouldn't have known someone who is a devout, you know, Christian, let's say, for example, was standing in line next to someone who literally believed we were seated by extraterrestrials 200,000 years ago and we, our DNA was bonded with, you know, divinity or whatever. Those are very conflicting beliefs. However, it takes getting to know someone to to see that, wow, okay, we really see the world differently. And this person might really be offended by this person's perspective, but they never would have known. But now we're in this age where literally we're wearing it kind of across our face and it's become this kind of political statement. I feel like the one thing that would really help bridge that gap is like is really understanding that we're not trying to be malicious with each other, or at least the vast majority of people that I know that might have conflicting beliefs, they're not trying to be malicious. They're really acting from a place where they think they are upholding their highest integrity. And I feel like if we could all just, even yeah. if it rubs us the wrong way, we really want to be, want to be right. Like you said, I feel like that compassion would bridge the gap with how much separation this is kicking to the surface. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, the thing is, is it's never, it's never personal, right? It's never about you. So what we've come to is we're so self-involved that we really believe that someone else's beliefs or what they're saying or what they're doing has something to do with us. And it really doesn't. But what does have totally to do with you is how you are being triggered by it and how you are reacting to it and how you are choosing to make it important if it isn't, or 
whatever it is. So we're being given this opportunity to have this sense of separation to choose maybe not to have it if we get uncomfortable enough. Like, I really do think we're at a maybe phase. Like, it's not, it's not a guarantee because it really is a question of free will. Like, we get to choose. And, you know, I've come to the place where, like, I'm okay with that. I'm okay if we all decide that, like, we're actually not gonna, <laughs> we're not gonna go through the, like, I have not no the urgency. Right <laughs> I have no issues with like, if everyone wants to continue with the drama and craziness, because we're at a point where like, we love the entertainment more than we love, like more than we want to be bored by being happy. Right? Like, so if that's the, if that's the consensus, then yeah, I'm for democracy. I'm for energetic democracy. I have a hundred percent. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you don't need to get worked up by anything. It's all, it's all your own choice to get worked up by it. And yes, of course, there are going to be things that it feels like it's impossible not to get worked up on. But those are the perfect things to practice releasing whatever's going in you that is causing you to get worked up over, you know, some Yahoo doing some crazy stuff on, you know, on the other yeah. side of the planet or, even, you know, in your backyard or whatever. On, on TikTok, those are your teachers. <laughs> It's so crazy because like if I didn't have my phone in my face, I honestly would, or in the few people I see walking with masks, I would not know there was anything going on. It's just so crazy. I'm like, if there was a thought experiment, this is definitely it of how can we, how much can we put through someone's screen saying there's something going on? I mean, this wouldn't be the first time that we've seen the government or, you know, powers that be do really shitty human experiments just to see what they can get away with, you know? Yeah. So that just kind of fathoms me of how, you know, I, I feel like that was not the point I wanted to make versus as much as it is that you can really be detached from it and like still be doing your thing and having a really blissful experience even amongst it all. Because I'm sure you've been at, in that boat more times than not throughout this time. Um, yeah, I'm in, I'm in Italy. I'm in Lombardy or Lombardia in Italian. And it has been the, the highest hit area of Italy um, from the beginning. Um, so we've been in lockdown pretty much March of last year on and off, um, more on than off. <laughs> and, you know, masks are mandatory and we're very lucky that the kids can go to school and there's all kinds of, there's all kinds of stuff. Do you know what I mean? But for me, I understood very quickly that I had, I had to deal with that. Like I had to deal with how I felt about that in me uh, very quickly. And I decided I wasn't going to make it about like some political, whatever's going on, because if that's the case, it's really like, yes, it affects me, but it's none of my business. I'm not getting tangled up with the energy of whatever's going on. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not yeah. going to get tangled up with those. Yeah. Like whoever's, causing the conspiracies and all that and and negative entities and stuff like that because that's not what i'm getting entangled with so what am i i'm still here focused on my mission spreading my love and light or whatever you want to call it you know and focusing on the bag green stuff and getting that book published this year even though it's been chaos in my private life you know and that's what i'm here for because if i was going to start taking an external circumstance especially this huge one and making it at all my focus just because it's happening, then maybe my life plan would be completely derailed. Mm -hmm. And I think if there is a conspiracy theory, like, or not even theory, if there is a conspiracy, like there is someone plotting against us. And like you said, governments have been known to do pretty horrible things to their people. Um, what better way than to derail people from their purpose? Absolutely. So it's my yeah. job to stay focused it's my job to stay aligned mm -hmm. and it's my job to deal with whatever distracts me and makes me uncomfortable and to sort through those feelings and to continue along my path of highest deliverance of my sole purpose to this planet at this time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wrapping that back around when you said there's certain expectations of you that's actually what came through for me is a. Uh, um I feel like you have to be, to be in a role, in a position that you are, there's a certain level of integrity that these beings are looking for. I remember in your book too, it said that they like working with people that have been brought up in religious households because there's that vibration of faith that's really essential in, in order for this to, um, to be a partnership that works. So I, I, I love that to, you know, to just to tie this up and wrap it all back around. I feel like, um, 
just the embodiment of the soul signature or of what you called it, the stream of your consciousness in this incarnation, uh, you need to be focused on self. And there's, I feel like if anything, this is just a strengthening, like one of the ways that, you know, my guides have been, <laughs> maybe I won't talk about it, the plant medicine in this particular session, but they call it like consciousness training when you are in a state of, for example, say your adrenaline is spiked and your consciousness wants to scatter because that's a form of like just being aware of all the external threats at once. But if you can hone your focus in despite that, like that's like going to the gym and like pumping a bunch of iron. It's like if you can train your consciousness under these events and circumstances that trigger these immense amounts of fight, flight, or freeze, then you literally are are doing some tough work. Because that's, I feel like that's just since we have been up or brought up in this society, it's it's been a pull at our attention since day one. And that's really how we come out of ourselves. And I feel like come out of alignment with that soul signature is not knowing how to focus. And I feel like this is, could be used as good consciousness training for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause you could imagine what would happen if everyone decided to focus, like just all of a sudden, this whole thing would be over. And that's, I think the decision that the catalyst is bringing us to, like that's what's being expected of or called through all of us i think is just get your shit together <laughs> you know it's it's go time it, like it really is i think it's just a question of each of us and you know i wish i wish that i was seeing more of this in sort of the spiritual community of the focusing i see a lot of distraction unfortunately because there were a lot of people who were doing amazing things a year ago who have given it up to sort of like fight a cause that i'm not sure needs fighting what i i think needs is focus i think there's like focus back on your own healing and what's being called through you for the benefit of, you know, humanity. Like what are the new systems that are being called through you? There's nobody to fight. We're fighting. Like it's all us, right? Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> even the government's like, it's, it's all us. It's all us. Mm-hmm. So let's each of us, each portion just be the better version. And then the collective just comes along with it like that's just how it is it has no choice yeah yeah i love that well thank you so much jessica thank you for your time thank you for your service to the planet your expression is so lovely uh i've been following your work for quite some time i think we've had each other on social media since that program we went in to together but um i will definitely link this beautiful lovely little book that i'm halfway through look how well worn it is (laughs) I'll link everything um, where people can find you and everything uh, in the description box. But Wonderful. I appreciate you and I'm sure we'll connect again very soon. Thanks so much for having me on this. And uh, yeah, I love your work as well. So oh, thanks, Jess. Thanks. All right. We'll talk soon. Much love. Okay.